everyone, you are watching Behind the Pen. I am your host, Karina Gantis. This is a special edition for LitCon 2021. I'm speaking with uh, my special guest today, Dawn Menge, all the way from the US. Hello, Dawn. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. That is a beautiful setup. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. A f look amazing and that term um, little teddy in front is that a frog no uh this is story monster and it's a magazine that i work with it's a children's magazine and i write book reviews and i judge their contests and all of my books are story monster approved and <laughs> they all have purple dragon awards on them so it's a it's a magazine that i work a lot well when we could go and do book events um, I would go to Arizona and do a lot of events with the magazine, and it's a really wonderful magazine. Wonderful. Well, we can certainly get back to that because I've got a lot of questions about that. But let's start off with um, your younger days when you were at college, <laughs> school and college. I mean, how were you when it came to writing and reading books and what, what was your passion at that time? Well, when I was little, um, fifth grade, third third grade, I think it was, I was having trouble uh, learning to read. So my dad sat down with me and read with me every night. So that kind of created the passion for reading. I loved Boxcar Children and The Outsiders and Nancy <gasps> Drew. Oh my as God, I was growing you just got me, The Outsiders. <laughs> yeah, all of that. She's the and reason so... I became an author, Essie Hinton. She's oh, the really? reason I became an author. Uh, her books, oh, how nice. have, they've just... Oh, they're just taking over my life. Uh, she she changed my life for the outsiders. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I got married right away when I graduated from high school. I had three kids. I um, didn't really think about going to college or anything at the time, but I started. My mom's a kindergarten teacher, so I kind of got started into that, and I now have a PhD in curriculum instruction. I teach moderate students with uh, severe cognitive delays. I've been doing that for over 20 years. And as part of one of my credentialing classes, we had an assignment to write a math book and to create a math game. So that's where Queen Vernita started from. It was, this is the first one. And it does days of the weeks, months of the years, and it's pre-K to first grade. And it was an assignment in my math class. And so like most teachers, at one point I said, I want to publish it. So I published it, self-published it, just put it out there. Immediately got a first place in the EV Awards, which is out of Colorado. It's an independent publisher's award. And I started getting interviews and people are asking me, well, what's your next book? And I'm like, I don't have another book. This is it, you know, I just wanted to do that. So um, we decided to make her, the, the queen travel throughout her kingdom. And since I love traveling, and this is something I got from my mother and my grandmother. So Queen Renita is actually named after my grandmother. And everybody in the book is a real person. Um, this, is my, this is my niece, Dana. And this is my nephew. And so uh, the, first, the first books, I put the kids in because I thought, well, they're not going to complain. You know, they're too little. And I'm trying to turn the page here. <laughs> And, but I found that the adults like to be in them. This one is my mom for September. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the queen decided to travel around her kingdom and everything in here are my real adventures. So I kind of have my own little role that I don't put something in the book unless I've actually done it myself. Because mm -hmm. I want to encourage everyone to go, the families to go out there and explore and, and do new things. So this one, was one I published in May. And it was a train ride we took from Arizona to the Grand Canyon. And there were 19 of us. See, this is all of us right here in the back. You can see my oh family. Oh my gosh. And we did that for Thanksgiving. And then we went on the Polar Express. We went back, put our jammas on, and rode on the Polar Express. <laughs> this is actually my grandson being held by Santa Claus. So this one is also pre-K to first grade. And it has all of my, it has, oops, sorry, my family. This is my son, my daughter-in-law, and my granddaughter. And they're actual pictures from our adventure. So, um, like I said, everything I do in the books, I've That's, done. That is absolutely amazing and so unique. 
Well, the, the first book you started with, as you said, you weren't sure you know, when you did it, you just wanted to publish it. You had no idea you were going to go any further than that. Um, yeah. What? Are, how many copies are we talking about that you sold to, to have so much interest in you after? How many copies? Yeah, from um, the first know, book. I, have, I don't keep track of how many I've sold. I, I mean, I should, <laughs> but I don't. I do, I sell a lot when I'm at uh, events. Yeah. So I, I started doing a lot of stuff with Story Monster Magazine and I sell a lot of books that way. I sell my books. I am the visiting author for our Young Authors Conference in my town. And so I do that. I've been doing that um, for like 11 years. And every time when I go, the parents come back and they say, okay, what new book do you have this year? You know, we, my child reads it every night. And so, they, and, and I came from a small town. So everybody knows everybody. And so that's really nice that they, that the kids come up and they say, oh, I read that one. And I read that one. I read this one. Which one's next? But this one is based in New Orleans. And this one goes up to sixth grade. And I went into, I went to New Orleans and went into the bayou and held a baby alligator. And so this is where it was an actual picture. And then and it has, it, they all have the same format. Each month has a new subject and a new friend. And then it has seven facts about that subject. And then the next page is a different subject. So it gives you a little tidbit of a subject in New Orleans and there's slavery. And so if you find something in there that's interesting, like the alligators, you can go look up the alligators. So it gives you a wide variety of things that are happening in that area. Um, this one, this one is about the solar system. And I wrote it with my little brother who is an astronomer at JPL. So each month, so he's, he studies, he studies how close the comets come to our planet. That's what he does. Scary. That's the, <laughs> That's the version, that's my version of saying what he does. It's very technical, but. So in my books, because I teach students with severe cognitive delays, I've added them into my books. So this is Jake and he has uh, cerebral palsy, I believe. And um, so he's learning about the stars from Sir Heathy Bean. Now my series has won 41. Sorry, is that the first time that you've put um... Uh, a child with disabilities in one of your books or are they in all of no, them? No, no. They're not in all of them, but the first one was um, Alaska. This one is on Alaska. And I think this was my second book. And then this one is, oh, I don't have that one. I have one on Kona, uh, the Enchanted Islands, and it has two disabilities. This one, this one has won, won uh, several awards in the film festivals. So that's what I started doing about a year and a half ago. I started entering into the film festivals. I just wanted to try something different and win different awards. Uh, it's not really validating to win like the same kind of awards each time. So I enter my books in different awards. Okay, okay. And you've, lost, you've lost me there. How does a book get entered into a film festival? Um, it's entered into the short written work. So it's like it's it's like the script section, but I'm able to enter my books. So I've won um, awards in four different film festivals. I was featured on their magazine last year. That was really nice. And uh, unfortunately, the ceremony was canceled because of you yeah. know, the pandemic. But it's got, it's on for this year so far. So I'm looking forward to going and this one won the, my, actually my whole series won the Special Recognition Champion Award for Conquering Disabilities with Film. Wow. So my whole, my whole series won that. And this is but the one that won the most. Have they been put into film? Have, has anyone uh, animated yeah. or book trailers or anything? I have book trailers, yes. And I've entered the book trailers into, they have the short clips under a minute and they've won awards. And so I, you know what, I, anybody who wants to try that should try it. It's really interesting. And there's a whole great group of people that you get involved with. And I've really enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to 
going to the festival and meeting everyone. And it's, it's gonna be very exciting. But this one has Rett syndrome and this little girl is a real person and she has Rett syndrome and this is her mom. And then she, it, this is also sixth grade. So it has a new subject. She's making lays for her friends at school. So it explains the lays and it tells you some of her disability and that her mom has to help her make the lays. And so it just gives you like a little tidbit of, of a disability. This one, this one was my student Connor and he's teaching the queen how to use his communication device because he can't speak. And so it's on autism and the volcanic islands, which is Kona. And it has seven facts about autism and his communication device. So there's a little bit of um, educational amazing. knowledge about disabilities that is in the book. That's amazing. It's not oh, just, you. you're not just a, a children book author because of your background, because of you um, working so many years with the children with disabilities. You, and I understand why you've put them in the book. It's very important that people yes. learn um, uh, educate themselves, even even the parents to educate themselves on these uh, disabilities. And I think it's wonderful that you've you've been able to to do that. The illustrations you have, is it you who's doing them, or you use the same person? Oh, oh gosh, no. <laughs> now, actually, when I first started, I, the illustrations were made through the the publisher. She did them. And then somebody, a publisher in France contacted me and they wanted the illustrations to go more with the content of the book because the content like it went up to third and fourth grade, fifth and sixth grade. So I actually found my illustrator at one of my events and um, she takes the actual pictures and incorporates them into an illustration. Yeah. And she does it all by hand and she watercolors and um, she just lives locally. She's she's not, you know. Local. Oh, so you get together then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we do wonderful. a lot of talking. Yeah, and so she has she has her own ideas about things. And so I let her I let her be as independent as possible, just as long as the facts are in there. But I might give her three or four pictures and say, This is where we were, put this all together, this is what I want, and she comes up with a with a gorgeous picture. I and mean, how she's long doing have you been working with her for now? Um, my gosh, I think 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she's been doing this. Like, this is my son. And we were in Tahiti. We were in Bora Bora. And mm -hmm. it was called snoobaline. It was kind of between snorkeling and scuba diving. And we went down and we were feeding the fish. And so this is my son. And so this is a subject in volcanic islands. That's amazing. Are you deliberately going uh, traveling for your books now? Before you were just traveling for fun, but now that you have um, a reason to go to these new places and to, to write about them, are you traveling, do you think, now for your yeah. book? No, no, because my, our family does a lot of traveling together. So uh, like my kids, they're all in their 30s and they're planning trips. So we just went to Zion. We just went to the Grand Canyon. And as we're doing things, I'm thinking, okay, we could do this or this. And so they're getting really used to being in the books. <laughs> and because I put, you know, their pictures and, you know, their names in there. And so like we went to Zion and, um, oh, no, it was the Grand Canyon. I'm sorry. We went to the Grand Canyon. Some of the kids went bicycling along the rim. So, okay, one page would be bicycling. Um, others went hiking. Um, you know, we did we did a lot, lots of really different things. So I'm thinking, okay, this, this could be one page. This could be another page. You know, what grade level should it be? Because you know, if you're going to do something like the Grand Canyon, you really need it to be like sixth grade level because you're going to put a lot of a lot of um, information in it. And so these these books are great for teaching. They they have um, geology oh, yeah. in them, and geography and history. And right now I'm working on one from Tucson, Arizona with a friend of mine. And it's got the Indians in it and it's got um, the missions and a lot of the history for Tucson. And it's actually centered in a bed and breakfast that's in Tucson. And so it's, we made her, it's a beautiful bed and breakfast. So we made her the center of 
of the, our little trip. So this one is not part of the Queen Bernita series and I just published it. It just came out a couple weeks ago. It's called Dragon's Breath. And it's about a king who has his kingdom and it's flourishing. And, and so suddenly there's all this black smoke and the everything starts to die. And so he has to figure out why, but I won't tell you why, but it just <laughs> came out. And, and it's actually kind of based on an experience that I had. And with a dragon. Um, really fun. Huh? An experience with a dragon. Well, I made the person, somebody was doing something bad. So I made the person the dragon. And um, it's, it's a story about not um, acting out and hurting people when you're jealous or you're angry and um, not lying. But it's, so it's got some uh, moral, moral lessons in there. So this but, is, a, is this a standalone or are you going to carry on with like a series for this book as well? No, this is just, this is a standalone. It's all by itself. Um, it was just something different that I wanted to do. And um, I liked I like it. I think it turned out really good. I did a whole, had a different illustrator. So it looks very different. Right. So it's so. separate, totally separate from your, what's her name? Queen? Yeah. What's her name? No Queen? The, the... Oh, her, yeah. Her name is Queen Giggles. Queen Giggles. King, Queen Giggles. And the king's name is King Teddy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Poor little kid. laughs> So, so um, and they're beautiful uh, size books. I love the size of the books because some children's books are still too small. Um, they come in uh, paperback, hardback. Can you get them on Kindle? I mean, children are reading from Kindles, the parents, um, what have you. They, they come in paperback. This one has hardcover. I think it's the only one that does. Um, they're on Kindle and they're on the... Um, Oh, the, the e books? Audio, oh, yeah, e books and audio books. Audiobooks, books? yes. Audio books. Yes, audio books. Most, um, okay. Almost all of them are audio books, also. As, is this done through your publisher, the audio books, or are you finding the narrators? Um, when I first started, I was self published, um, but I had someone publishing them, and I wasn't getting any um, any sales. Like they're all over, they were all over the internet, but I wasn't getting any, they were telling me I wasn't selling them. So I picked up, it's a hybrid publisher mm -hmm. and it's called Rushmore Press. And so they republished all of my books and are helping me to promote them. And that's what the last, you need. That's what you need. Yeah, the last that's, four books. Yes. Yes. I don't know why they were saying I wasn't selling them, but now they're selling online and I'm getting royalty checks, which is really nice. <laughs> this is this is what's um, difficult for for authors is that uh, whether they're self published or published, most of the time the publisher will make you do the work, make you market and promote right. your books. Most publishers do that. Even the top five get their authors to do their own. So for someone who who does have no no idea about marketing and promotion, to have their uh, publisher actually teach them and show them the way and what to do and actually them doing it themselves as well because if they, you don't make any sales they're not making any money so it's right. Right. it's obvious that they they have to you know um do some dirty work as it's called it dirty work do some dirty work as well <laughs> and not leave it all up to you and that's really unusual to to hear that nowadays which is really sad because a lot of authors are struggling because they're they're left to their own devices, whether they've got a publisher or not. You know, some publishers are small presses that have no clue about marketing and promotion. Yeah. You know, why are you doing this when you can't help get sales for the books that you're publishing? You know, it right. just makes sense, does it? That you think, you think that any publisher would put their hand in and get, you know, to, to, to get those sales because it's without them you know it's especially little publishers they'll go with with the covid and everything they'll go under if they don't get their sales so yeah. it's a, it's a shame that uh, more small publishers uh, don't do that and with hybrid uh, for those that uh, are, are listening and don't know what that is that's like half and half it's 
you're doing the self-publishing and they're doing the publishing, but you have um, them doing, say, uh, the editing and the cover of the book. Um, you'll find someone to do the formatting. And, and it's, it's a, a merger um, where you each got your own... Um, uh, You've each got your own uh, part to play in that book. And, and with the hybrid as well, you actually get more royalties because you are putting money towards it. You're putting um, your own effort towards it and you're finding whether you need an editor or whether you need the formatter or a cover designer or your own illustrator. That saves them money if you bring your own illustrator in. So no matter how it works out with a hybrid publisher, you're always getting, the author's getting more royalties than working with a proper uh, press, a proper publisher. So um, that's just for people that didn't know what hybrid was. Um, what's, uh, what are you working on next? What's happening next with your books? <laughs> uh, well, right now I have a book that's um, in, in formatting, waiting to be published. It's, we go to a place called Hull on the Beach. It's on the coastline of California. Our family goes there. And so I wanted another pre-K book to read, you know, to audiences because the higher books are really hard to read. Um, so it's on a camping trip. So it has kite flying and swimming and um, raccoons and an ostrich farm. These are all things that we do when we go camping together. And you fishing. Know, uh, there are so many kids that want you as a mother right now. <laughs> <laughs> what you do with well, your I'm family is just so I'm done. <laughs> oh bless you. But, but what you do really with your family is, a, is is just amazing and it's um I know it's an American thing. It's a shame it's not uh, more internationally known that families to do as much as you do with yours. Um I know there's there's people watching thinking, oh I wish I wish, you know, my mum took me camping and I wish I had those experiences. Um, but they can if they go and buy your book. They can have the same experiences that you've had. They can they yes. can go to those places. They can learn about what you did if they read your book. So you're giving the opportunity for these children that don't have the means or... or the funds or the parents or whatever that will go out and spend time and teach them and um, spend time as a family like you do with yours. And um, by writing about your family and your adventures in these beautiful children's books, it uh, allows them to um, go on those adventures with you. I think that's really yeah. magical. Yes, I hope that it encourages families to get out there and, um, you know, sometimes you don't even know what's out there. Like, like you don't know that you can ride a train to the Grand Canyon and ride on the Polar Express. This one was on a paddle boat trip. We took up the Snake River and it has jazz in it and all sorts of things. So, you know, you might norm not know that you could actually do that. Yeah, um, and they're like guidebooks, have... guidebooks for children. <laughs> I've actually had, this one is on the coastline of California. So it's got tide pools and swimming with an octopus. And wow. when I do my book event in Arizona, I actually have families that have bought it because they're going to go on a road trip up the coast. So they use and, it as a tour guide. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so to kind of, oh, and also New Orleans. I actually had an adult that bought the New Orleans book because she was going to New Orleans. And she fantastic. wanted to read it before she went. That's amazing. Like, did you did you yeah, ever yeah. think your books would would create such um, uh, a buzz, but um, not just to be uh, educational like you wanted them to be, but for them to turn out as you know being tour guides and adults buying them, and and hopefully, like you say, uh, getting. Uh, families to go out more and, and see more and explore more I mean when you first started it was just for educational purposes to get um, the message across um, about uh, disabilities and um, information to, for the child to learn something from the book whether it was to do with um, 
a history of some place or um, a mathematics, science, um, geography, as you say. But for it to turn and to turn into what it has now, I mean, did you expect that? I mean, how do you feel about that? No, not at all. I just expected to, to publish this and then that was that was done. Like when I published it, I didn't even think about doing, you know, book book events or or anything, you know, or write book reviews for a magazine or judge contests. I, you know, I never thought any of that. For a while I got a little discouraged and I started uh, joining some organizations. And that's what I suggest for for anyone who's trying to publish. I joined the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, and that was one of the best things I ever did. I started going to their conferences and meeting some really neat people. And so you meet people who are New York Times bestselling authors, uh, like Kwame, Kwame, sorry, Kwame Alexander. I was one, on one of his book, book launches. And so I went to a little bookstore in LA and listened to him speak. And it was just amazing. And it was really neat. And so I got that experience, but he has a speech that he does that he did at the end of one of the conferences when I was just, just really tired and like, I can't do this. And I just sat down and I had to sit on the floor. It was so crowded, but he has a speech called Yes. And he talked about how hard it was for him to get started. He started self-publishing. He started, you know, it was hard for him too, but he started just saying yes to all the new experiences. Just say yes. You when know, opportunity and then meet, knocks, when opportunity right, knocks, yes. <laughs> you say you open the door. Yeah, you never say no. Yeah. So he, you know, he and by trying new things, he found a whole bunch of people. And now, of course, he's uh, very, very famous now. But but he's a really nice man. And to meet them in person, you know, yeah, it's, you see these successful people, and you think, you know, how did they do that? But they go up there and they talk about how many rejections they have had. And how many years they've been working on this. And then yeah. you're like, okay, you know, you know, it's not that easy, even if it looks like it is for them, or how they got started or what they were doing. And it's just, and they treat you just wonderful. They treat you just like you're up there with them, you know. And I want to I um, so talk I said, about the, the magazine uh, in a moment, but I just want to ask you, because of the COVID and everything being virtual now and not being able to go face to face, do your signings, do your readings, which is uh, what you should be doing because of the books you have. That is your that is your path is, is actually meeting people and talking with them yes. and reading from your books. And of course, you make your sales. But I think I think that's your, your path of what you should be doing. And of course, we're not able to do that now. And everything is virtual marketing. How are you getting along with the. Um, the change in the marketing and promoting of your books? Well, actually, when it when this started, um, I, I work in Sacramento and I help develop the test questions for our standardized testing. And I was up there with a bunch of teachers and their schools were all shutting down. And so we I went back home and I went to work on Friday and never and didn't go back. <laughs> we weren't even allowed back in our classrooms to get our stuff. So it was kind of a shock, you know, yeah. and trying to figure out to do and to try to teach our students online on zoom it's it, it's been a great challenge but all my students and families have stepped up and it's been wonderful but since I didn't have any events to go to anymore you know I had I was scheduled for actually I was scheduled to go to New York City and have a book signing in Times Square at the book oh. con oh, and dear. I was so excited and it got canceled <laughs> so we took that part of the money and we used it to make the audiobooks and what I decided to do since now I teach from home now because I'm a teacher and I decided to write. This is my time that I could get some books out. So I've actually, when I'm all done, I've actually published, I think five books during the pandemic. Wow. So Queen Bird got some more series and Dragon's Breath was able to come out. And so I used my time for that. And also I've done a lot more um, interviews online interviews and written interviews and just networking a lot more and taking advantage of that since I'm home. And so that's worked out really well because I'm sure when I go, when we get to go back to work in school, I'm not going to have the time and energy to be writing more books. I'll be working on 
going to the events and, and publicizing what I already have out. But you've so learned, that's you've what learned I, this new medium now. You've learned about Zoom. You've learned about radio and mm-hmm. podcasts, which you probably didn't do before. That's always going to be around when, when it, we're back to normal and we're working and you're still doing your events outside the virtual world is still going to be there for you. So it's opened up a new door, basically, for many authors um, that are taking, that are actually, some some are not bothered about and they're waiting for the pandemic to to um, to leave and yeah. things get back yeah. to normal. But uh, sure, that's when, when you've got that, when you've got that opportunity, like I said, opportunity knocks, it's there for you. So you take it and you run with it and you've opened yourself up to a new medium that's always going to be there and is going to find you new readers and is going to get your book seen by people that have never heard of you or or seen your books before. And of course, that's what every author should be aiming for. Let's um, talk about the magazine now. Um, Tell me a little bit about Mm -hmm. the magazine. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a copy with me, but <laughs> That's it's all right. called Story, Story Monster. I usually have a copy to show, but Story it's Monster called Story there, Monster Magazine. So. <laughs> yeah, you can just you can just Google Story Monster Magazine, and um, it's a it's a children's. Well, it's it's for teachers and librarians, oh. but it's for children's it's for children's books, um, and she's a publisher out of Tempe, Arizona. Um, like this month is Mayhem. Balik, the woman who worked on Big Bang Theory, is who they interviewed this month. And so she is also an author. And I write book reviews. So I actually wrote them yesterday. Um, they send me a box of books that people want. Their, they publish them in their, in their uh, magazine. So I write, I write book reviews. And then they have several different contests. And I help judge the children's books. And then, then I get to use the books in my classroom and my students make book reports. And then sometimes I'll contact the author and show them the, you know, our bulletin board where my students made um, a book report out of their book. And they, they just love that part of it. Oh, yeah. And then I get to give the books to, to my students, you know, now they get books. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. It's and a publisher also- though. Sorry. It's a story monster is actually a publisher. So all the books are published by them. It's not like independent people can go into the contest. Well, with the uh, story monster being a publisher and you doing the book reviews, is that the book reviews from their books that they publish and the contest? Oh, no, from- they're no, they're books through all, all publishers. I had like this time I had a lot from Candlewick publishing um scholastic no you send your book to them and they will send it they have several reviewers and they send it to the reviewers and then they publish it in their magazine but the books are from just all sorts of people yeah they're not just books from that publisher yeah the reason i'm there is a a actual reason why i'm asking that my daughter she's 11 now she has two illustrated children's books Uh, she wrote her first one when she was seven um, so, um, you know, finding a, a place like that that will um, maybe uh, take a look at the book, maybe review it or something. It's, uh, it's that's why I was asking you right about now, that. Right now, they're having a poetry contest. I don't know if she writes poetry. I think it was poetry. They're having a contest for children, um, second to seventh grade, I think it was. Um, just look under Story Monster, or it's on my Facebook. I, I posted it yesterday. So she might look at that and see. They have lots of contests. I'm sure they're international. Um, and so, but they are also, if you publish through them, it's also like a self published. So it, you would have to pay to have it published. Yeah. Um, yeah so they're no, not. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, um, but. She's Linda is a wonderful pub, uh, person, and I love working with her, and I love going to the events with her. And she's she the magazine's amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely uh, gonna can, take a look at that. Te- yeah, a teacher or librarian, I think you can get it for free, um, but I don't know how much it costs. But it's a really neat book, and it shows you all the different books that are out. And I really enjoy working for them. That's wonderful. So uh, you have. You said you've got an event and so far it hasn't been cancelled. Uh, what event is the next, uh, um, when is it? When's uh, the event coming up? 
Oh, that this event is the film festival in Las Vegas, and they have it scheduled for the end of July. Wow. And so, so That's far, crazy. it's still there. <laughs> How exciting. So we'll see. So, yeah, you, you I'm mentioned- excited because it's a lot of different festivals in one place. So it was a conquering disabilities with film. There was action on film. And that's the reason I was on the, I was part of the magazine. They did a whole uh, spread on me, which was really nice. And then there was, what was the other one? Hollywood Dreams. I also uh, was entered into that. So I will know if I won anything in July. <laughs> but it would have no, been from last I had so no idea the that you could, together. children's books or any books could be entered into a film festival contest. I always just assumed um, yeah. it was well, I, entered, and... I entered. I actually contacted the. I entered into the disabilities one, and I actually contacted the f- person first. Like, can I enter my books? And she said, sure. And so they have the special recognition champion award because my books have the disabilities in them and stuff. And then from there, because she's she knows the other people, Del Weston. Um, I got into the action on film, and then then they did the spread for me. And then um, the Hollywood Dreams, that was all part of it. And then I entered one called Beyond the Curve and I put my book trailer in it. It's for the short for the one minute. And I was a finalist for that. So um, it's just, you know, and I entered some of my book trailers and it's just kind of fun to do something different and meet different people totally and to see what they're different. doing. I don't yes. think And so. I would really love, you know, to get a, to get a movie deal or <laughs> be the next <laughs> the next magic school bus or something like that. I would really love that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you would, yeah. But I, I think for, for children uh, book uh, authors who will be watching this uh, episode, either on LitCon or uh, as a podcast or uh, on YouTube, my YouTube show, um, they probably have no idea that they're able to uh, enter into a film festival. So, so you've really uh, opened another door to to uh, to them that uh, that wasn't there before. I mean, I didn't even know, and um, I've been in this business twenty seven years, fourteen books now, and uh, I, I had no idea that uh, books could be entered. So that that's wonderful. To um, I hope um, any authors that are watching uh, and. Uh, do some research about it and find out more about it because uh, it's uh, the recognition that you've been given is is truly deserving. Um, and uh, I, I'm sure that uh, the following books that you're going to be doing, especially your uh, traveling ones, uh, are, are going to carry on receiving these uh, amazing awards. Um, but of course, it's it's not about the awards it's about uh, making sure that uh, people read your books and um, hopefully review the books and give you some feedback and know that you're you're doing a good job because when you hear back from your readers then that gives you the confidence to carry on and do another book and another book and it's when you don't hear back or when you don't get the reviews and that's when you start deflating a little like you said, when you, before you went to that um, conference, you were feeling like you were ready to just give up. I know many authors yeah. have been in that place. Um, and it's amazing what you've, you've achieved since then. And uh, you are just so positive and um, bubbly. And you can see you're a teacher. <laughs> you, you can see that straight away. Um, yeah. Well, I hope that's a good thing. (laughs) No, it's a really good thing. So uh, where can people find you on social media if they want to contact you? I have a Facebook. It's um, Dawn Menge 1. I have an Instagram that's Dawn Menge and a Twitter that's Queen Vernita. Oh, And then you can find me me on Rushmore Press. And, of course, you know, Amazon and Barnes & Noble and all of that, too. Um, your book, yeah, your books the, are wide, yeah. Your books are sold everywhere. They're not um, just yes, with Amazon. Worldwide, yes. Wonderful. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Waterstones. You know, all sorts of bookstores. So independent bookstores. I have a website, Dr. Don Minch, too. Wonderful. <laughs> have you 
have you translated any of them? Are you planning on translating any of them? Um, none, none of them are, and I haven't thought about it uh, at that at this point. I haven't thought about doing that. Because the um, Mexico I'll talk to my one, publisher and maybe yeah, I mean the Mexico maybe, Mexico one you could do uh, it in uh, uh, yeah Spanish. Spanish. Is it? Yeah, Spanish and. And, and then you find a new marketplace, um, you find yes. new readers, and you make it, you know, you've done your audio books now, so the next thing is translation or, or a film, like you said. <laughs> I, I, like, I like the film idea. You like the film <laughs> idea? Actually, I used to go, I used to go to Tucson, and the Tucson University has a huge book festival, and I went there, I had um, my, actually my co-author for the Tucson book, lived there. So we, my mom and I would go there and go to the book event. And a lady came and was building a library in Ghana, Africa. So she, she was buying books for the library. So she bought some of mine and then I donated some. And I said, well, send me pictures, you know, not thinking I would really get any pictures, <laughs> but she did. She sent me pictures oh, of the library they'd built and the children in Ghana uh, checking out my books from the oh. library. So that was, that was really exciting. It was at the very beginning. Wow. And then I had a friend. I had a friend that I worked with who actually came from uh, Africa, and a lot of her relatives were teachers. So she took my books and passed them out, and they sent me also sent me pictures and videos of my the children reading my books in Africa to the class. And like those are those Surreal. are pictures are probably six yeah. years old, but Surreal. they're still every time I see them, I'm like, wow, yeah. I just. I just love that, you know. Yeah. The classroom in Africa is reading my books. <laughs> you can't get so, better than that. You can, really yeah, can't. Yeah, that no. yeah. That's that's amazing. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure seeing your books and chatting with you, and uh, and and you've just passed on the the passion that you show for what you do. It's just uh, very addictive, and I hope that uh, those <laughs> watching this uh, episode will then go to uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble or Waterstones, where anywhere they buy their books and uh, have a look for um, your books there. Um, it's amazing what you do and I wish you all the best well, with you. the future. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for being my special guest on LitCon 2021 on Behind the Pen. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much for having me and letting me share my, my stories and my adventures. You're very welcome, Dawn. All the best. <laughs> Bye.